Divide and Conquer, published at the Outpost of Freedom on August 16th, 2009. In war, in battlefield combat, one of the most important strategies, especially if the enemy has superior numbers, is to divide and conquer. Very briefly, it can be explained that if you have a force of 3,000 and the enemy has a force of 4,000, you will probably be defeated in combat. However, if you can cause him to divide his forces into two groups, each having about 2,000 men, you have gone from 25% less men against his entire force to a 50% advantage over one of the divided forces. Once the first unit is defeated, the second unit can be attacked with much greater odds than if an attack was made on the entire force at the outset. The same is true of the psychological warfare America is embroiled in today and the political warfare that has begun to divide the country and our own patriot community. Here are just some of the singular objectives that are commonly pursued today. Police State Objective 1 FEMA camps. Back in the 90s, a list of alleged FEMA prison camps surfaced and circulated via fax network and other methods that were common at the time. That same list has resurfaced and circulated on the internet. The list, at least a part of it, was bogus. I personally investigated four of the sites and they were not what they were alleged to be. More recently, another list has begun to circulate. It is substantially larger, though it does mention locations from the older list. This list may have more truth to it than the previous list. It appears that either bids have been taken, or even contracts let for restoration and or construction on a number of World War II camps or internment centers. So... What if they are building these camps? What will we do about it? Can they be stopped? Yes, if the new construction is destroyed. But that will simply delay things. Will exposure to the public of the camps serve any purpose? Yes and no. People will be aware of them and may be resentful that they are being built. But the government will most assuredly, come up with a plausible explanation that will satisfy at least some, and nothing will be done to change the continuation of what they have already begun. The problem is that an administrative agency, FEMA, has been granted extraordinary power, authority, and budget funds to Prepare for an emergency, whether man-made or natural. Objective 2. Forced Vaccination This subject has generated a disproportionate amount of debate. The facts appear to suggest that the outbreak and the death rate are substantially lower than many other sources of disease and death. This brings into question, or suspicion, the insistence of a vaccine. Quite simply, take the vaccine or don't take the vaccine. The problem is that the administrative agencies, in conjunction with United Nations agencies, have determined a course of action to be implemented, or forced, upon the American people. This application seems to be inconsistent with the facts, but there is no recourse or redress of grievances as provided for by the Constitution. Objective 3. Drug Prohibition Drug wars are nothing more than an attention-getter and a tool used to demonstrate to the naive portions of the public 
that government is doing all that it can to get rid of crime. Of course, there is no victim to the crime, except the person who spends thousands for their lawyers, a thousand more in fines, and, perhaps, a few years of his life in prison. The problem is that administrative agencies have been granted, by the Congress, the authority to enact policies that a constitutional amendment could only impose less than a century ago, that being alcohol prohibition. They have also ignored the guarantee of a Republican form of government in Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution in the states by allowing their policy to override state enactments and initiatives that have removed penalties for certain drugs and persecuting those they have managed to license by removing licenses of those who violate their administrative policies. In reviewing these issues and realizing what the outcome of each will provide as a result, we can see that we are facing a myriad of tasks, none or few of which will result in more than a very singular solution to a very singular problem. If, after years of effort, a battle, which has been waged, is won, leaving no residual to encumber us into a continuation of that battle, we can then choose another battle to pursue. However, who is to believe that if a battle is won, finally and decidedly, that another objective will not appear to take its place? The division of our forces is inherent in the struggle as we are pursuing it, each, due to his personal ideology, has chosen one or another of the objectives and is willing to give 100%, not realizing the futility of even success in that battle once the battle is completed. Is there an alternative course that can achieve all of the objectives? If we were in a battlefield where an effort has been made to divide the forces, giving advantage to the enemy, we would, if our objective was to win and we had superior forces, refuse to divide our force. The enemy would have anticipated being successful in creating the division, as they most certainly believed to be the case, and would not anticipate an all-out attack on their main base, leaving them divided simply by believing that we were divided. In this psychological or political war that we are engaged in, what strategy would overcome the division that has given such an advantage to the enemy? Could it be to concentrate our forces on a single issue? Most assuredly. It would be unsuccessful, since, even though that battle may be won, it would only lead us to the next battle, and the next, and eventually, to defeat. Would we rather pay lip service to George Washington, or would we rather do that which is necessary to achieve the removal of a despotic government? He was willing to do what was necessary to expel those who resisted allowing freedom and liberty to prevail in the land. He supported those peaceful efforts when there was hope for them to succeed. When that hope was gone, though, he chose the only course that remained. When peaceful methods had convinced the Founding Fathers that they would be of no avail, the efforts were stepped up to force the hand of the despotic government. Surrender was not in their vocabulary. The desire of the despots to retain control was the force that was necessary to compel the colonists to risk all when all else had failed. We have tried petitions. We have tried demonstration. We have been ignored by those in power for every effort we have exerted. Perhaps 
Now is the time to extend our efforts into physical effort. Create displeasure and discomfort for those in power and those who support them. In addition, we must be sincere and methodical, for if we fail in this effort, there remain but two choices, victory by force of arms or defeat by failure to be willing to fully commit to the cause.